Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor. It's like it. I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto the Most High Yahweh in the name Bahasham Yahweh Shai, which is the name of the only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go into this. You know, uh, Lord willing, is edifying through the Spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. But I'm gonna you know do just a, a quick video. You know, is it won't take too long. You know, but this is on Vocab Malone's page. Uh, I had been watching videos. Um, you know, certain things came out, and you know, uh, one of the videos that that popped up was Vocab Malone. You know, sometimes I have it on autoplay, so it'll just skip onto different videos, and I'll listen if if it's trash. You know, if it's like some conspiracy theory BS. I'll change the video. Um, you know, usually it'll go to a brother's uh, video and I'll listen to it, you know, and then I'll jump to another video. And sometimes it'll randomly jump to, you know, some different, you know, weird ass video, you know. Um, but anyways, that's beside the point. I ended up on Vocab Malone's video and I only watched about five minutes of it. All right. And I just started laughing, man, because you could... <laughs> You could tell he's trying real hard, man. You know, this guy's trying real hard to disprove what we bring out. All right. Because it says, I believe the title of it was like 40, 40 verses against Israel only doctrine. Right. <laughs> and one of the first ones, actually, this is the first one he brings out. Let, let me just play it for you. Three. Isaiah 56, three says, let not the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people, nor let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. A couple verses. All right, so that, that's the first one he brought out was the book of Isaiah 56, right? And verse 3 is what he says. All right, but notice he's using a, a different uh, translation, which is exactly why we usually recommend sticking to the King James all right just stick to the king james you can go to these other translations it's not a sin all right but you know we we usually go to that for you know for further uh inspiration or further um you know breaking down of the scriptures or or you know what have you all right but right here you have isaiah 56 and let me start up at the top first one thus saith yahweh keep ye judgment and do justice okay for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed okay so that's pretty straightforward keep the uh your judgments and, and do justice right which doing judgments and, and judgments is according to the law statutes and commandments according to scripture you know you have to be scriptural you can't you can't go off of scripture basically what i'm saying you know you have a lot of israelites that that, that want to come up against uh, certain things that we teach, you know, but if it's scriptural, then really there's nothing they can do except for whine and, and bitch and moan about, you know, what we do, you know, which really what we're trying to do is, is wake up the elect. That That's really the ultimate goal, because when we wake up the elect, all right, and the elect is, is, is woken up, all right, and there's a full multitude that follows, the end is going to come, you know, especially when when all the prophets that are supposed to be prophesying um are prophesying you know so it says blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it that keepeth the sabbath from polluting it and keepeth his hands from doing any evil so my first question to to that man and to vocab malone and to any christian when is the sabbath and prove it through the scriptures all right because most people say, well, it's actually Saturday, not Sunday. All right. But how do you know that that's that's the sixth day? Right. How do you know that's the sixth day? When the Gregorian, the uh, Roman Roman calendar, the Greco uh, calendar, the uh, Gregorian calendar. All right. Came out with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All right. Therefore, polluting the Sabbath day, you know. 
how do you prove the scripture that the Sabbath day falls on Sunday or Saturday every single week? You know, that's something that IUIC teaches. That's something that um, that Christianity teaches, man. And they can't prove it, you know? But we prove that the Sabbath is according to the new moon, seven days after that, and then seven days after that, and then seven days after that. You have four weeks in a month, and that word month goes back to the word moon, which are the moonar, uh, lunar phases of the moon. Okay, lunar goes back to uh, luna, which means moon. Month goes back to the word moon. Okay, so it revolves around the, the, the moon for the month. Okay, so a Sabbath day, all right, a day is part of a week. Okay, and the end of the week would be the Sabbath day, right? That's the rest, the day of rest. That doesn't mean it's going to line up with the Gregorian calendar, which is Saturday. Because the moon has different phases and it falls on different days, you know? So that's number one. How are you keeping the Sabbath day holy? You know, which they, they're not going to be able to, to break it down. How they're keeping it holy. They're just going to say we go to church on Sundays and we go to church on Wednesdays, you know? But the Sabbath day changes according to the moon, you know? That's why you should keep your eye peeled for... For the elders and apostles whenever they post it up because it changes every week or, or not every week so lucky it changes uh every month is what i meant to say you know so that was verse two so lock let me driving over here uh that was verse two now let me get to verse three which is what he was bringing out neither let the son of the stranger that's a foreigner all right the son of the stranger which is through what? Whenever Israel had children, all right, the males had children through the women, some of the women were strangers, you know? So if you couldn't prove your lineage that you were an Israelite, you were considered a foreigner or a stranger, you know? So you have uh, people like, um, I'm trying to think of one person uh, in the book of Ezra, in the book of Ezra and first and second Ezra's okay you had Israelites that couldn't prove their lineage okay because of the sons uh, because of the daughters of, of the other nations that the sons of Israel went into they had children and then those children had children you know so on and so forth and they couldn't prove that their father was an Israelite so they were kicked out from being part of the the um, um, the Levites, um, what is it called? Salakia. I'm trying to think of the word. Um, priestship, uh, priesthood, you know? They couldn't call themselves priests, the sons of the Levites, uh, of Levi, certain ones of them, because they couldn't prove their lineage, you know? And now we're all priests, okay? We're coming into that power of being priests of the priesthood okay and we no longer have to prove our lineage you know we just have to show forth our works which is going out to the highways and hedges not hiding behind videos and and doing all that man we we go out there to the highways and the hedges you know great millstone is known for that great millstone is known for making the videos you know pushing out the knowledge so again, Isaiah 56 and verse 3. Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to Yahweh speak, saying, Yahweh hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the Enoch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. All right, so let's go into, because he said the foreigner, right? So I said, let the son, which is Ban, which means son, male, okay, of the stranger, which is Nakar, which is foreign and alien, all right? That which was foreign, foreignness, you see? Foreignness, which is a female. It says alien foreigner, foreign, okay? So it says from, 
which means foreign all right so uh strange you know from a, a different either country or from a uh you know a different place because you had israelites that were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth okay and when they were scattered to, to those places they started calling themselves by the name of those places you know he tried to break it down and said that the greeks uh, uh we only speak that the greeks are only israelites all right which is not the the greeks that scriptures talk about where there's no difference between a jew and a greek okay we're talking about israelites that uh that are israelites all right people that didn't call themselves israelites but are israelites that are calling themselves greek okay there's no difference between those people and the jews why because of the same people all right we're the same israelites and we don't teach all right Volcan Malone says that we teach that Jews are only of the nation of Judah. All right, which na the nation, each tribe is likened unto a nation, you know. But Jews is not only Judah. We always bring this out. It's predominantly Judah. All right, but it was also Benjamin and Levi. They were calling themselves Jews because they were under the kingdom of Judah, which is the southern kingdom. After King Solomon, it was split. Okay, so that's another that's another cut to, to whatever he believes. You know, saying that we believe only, you know, Jews are Judah. Okay, so it says. Let me go over here. It's a lock here. So going back. It says, neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself unto Yahweh speak, saying, Yahweh hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the Enoch say, behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith Yahweh unto the Enochs that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in my house and with my walls a place and a name better than the sons and of daughters I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off and the sons of the stranger that join themselves to Yahweh to serve him and that love the name of Yahweh to be his servants everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant all right now we did have uh certain uh converts all right um that were heathen that were trying to keep you know the law statutes and commandments of yahweh shai that's where the samaritans you know uh came from that's why you had people that that were samaritans that called themselves keeping um yahweh shai to themselves as well you know when in reality you know that they they weren't israelites they were basically pretending to be israelites so it says uh let me go back to verse six and also the the sons of the stranger that join themselves to yahweh to serve him and to love the name of yahweh to be his servants everyone that keepeth the sabbath day from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant right so how can you take hold of a covenant when the covenant was done with israel you see so if the most high has a covenant with israel how can you possibly be grafted in to the covenant of israel well if your father's an israelite despite of what your mother is say your mother is an edomite and your father is an israelite okay then it doesn't matter what your mother is as long as your father's an israelite you can be grafted in to keeping the covenant of yahabashim yahushai that's what it means to be a son of a stranger you know if you're the son of a stranger okay say your your father was an israelite and your mother is not an israelite whatever nation you want to call it okay and you listen to this truth you hear this truth it resonates with you 
and your help Hashem Yahweh Shai increases you in spirit to believe, all right, and then you start studying, and eventually you start going out to the highways and byways, you start teaching, and you're faithful to your help Hashem Yahweh Shai, okay, the Most High is pleased with that, you know? You are an Israelite, the spirit uh, bears witness with our spirit that you are the children of the Most High. That's what that's talking about, man. You know? It doesn't mean that if, if your father was an Edomite and your mother was an Edomite and you guys are all Edomites, okay, and you want to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, and you start going out to the highways and byways and preaching, then, you know, you're going to be saved too. You know? Why do you think, okay, uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, the, the king of, of Moab, I believe it was, that tried to curse Israel and they brought that man, um, you know, one that served Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai or Yahweh. Um, he was of another nation, okay? And he prophesied and he said, oh, that my end would be like those people, which is talking about Israel, you know? Wishing that he would die like an Israelite. Why? Because the latter end of an Israelite is salvation, okay? Is a kingdom, you know, is everlasting uh, uh, peace, you know? Those are the promises given unto Israel, man. It wasn't given to anybody else, you know? So to prove that, to prove that the salvation that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai brought is not just talking about, you know, a, a foreigner, all right, which that foreigner does mean an Israelite foreigner, okay? Let's go to Deuteronomy. I don't know what the hell is going on. Deuteronomy 33. And I'm going to start off at verse 27. It says, so like in verse 26, there is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, all right, which when you go into that word Jeshurun is Yasharwan, all right, or Yasharawan which means upright one, okay? And then it explains to you that Yasharawan is a symbol of Israel, right? Those that do justice, those that do good in Israel, you know? Right now, doing good in Israel is going out to the highways and byways, making videos, increasing this knowledge, this wisdom, this understanding, and staying faithful to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's doing good in Israel. You know, especially to teach. So it says, Who rideth upon the heaven in thy excellency? Uh, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help and in his excellency on the sky? All right. And that's talking about the, the chariots of Israel. It says, The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say, Destroy them. Okay. Who is the enemy of Israel? Number one is Esau, Edom. Okay. But also these other nations that came up against Israel. Right. So it says, uh, verse 28, Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob. Okay. So just in case you thought that this was talking about a spiritual Israelite. Okay. Which means according to Christian doctrine, a spiritual Israelite is... Anybody that believes in the Most High of any nation, that's a spiritual Israelite, according to them. Which partly, it's true, okay? Because we were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, you know? So we are going to call ourselves by the names of these other nations. And the Israelites that do believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, or, or the people that do believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai until the very end, are the Israelites, you know? But it doesn't mean that any Ed if your father's lineage goes back to Edom, that doesn't mean you can make it. Okay, if your father's lineage goes back to Moab, if your father's lineage goes back to Ammon, you're not gonna make it in the kingdom to the kingdom of heaven. You're not gonna make it into salvation. You know? So it says there is none like unto the power of Yeshua One. Let me drop down again. Salakia. Uh Deuteronomy 33 and 28. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone and the fountain of jacob all right which are the offspring of jacob which are the 12 pa uh, patriarchs 
It says, shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heaven shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by Yahweh, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency. And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. Which means Israel is going to receive the kingdom. You know? It's not going to be all these other nations. They're not going to receive a, a little portion of, of the kingdom of heaven. You know? It's going to be only Israel. You know? You had that dude breaking it down, or so-called breaking it down, saying, To the foreigners. So that word foreigners, and, and he even says himself, Don't go based off of... Uh, their definition which is not our definition okay it's the definition that the scriptures give us you know for the word foreigner it, it, it's applied to israel you know so going back over here isaiah 56 and 6 also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to yahweh to serve him and to love and, and that and to love the name of yahweh to be his servants everyone that keepeth the sabbath day from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. And that's what we're doing right now. All right. We're keeping the Sabbath days. We're, you don't see these Christians keeping the Sabbath days. They don't even know when the Sabbath day is. You know. So how can they possibly keep the Sabbath day. If they don't know when the Sabbath day is. So then that's a, that's a clear cut to themselves man. You know. When is the Sabbath day and break it down. Because we know. We break it down through scripture. We don't just talk about the sabbath day we, we go into it man and we can go into it you know so it says um take it hold of my covenant right so now let's go to romans chapter 9 and verse 1 i say the truth in mashiach i lie not my conscience also bear me witness with the holy spirit that i have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart for I could wish that myself were accursed from Mashiach, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of the Most High, and the promises. You see? So when you go into that word service, first let me get that one, then I'll go back up. Uh, service, which is Latreya, okay, Latreya, which is service rendered for hire. You see, we didn't hire the Most High, the Most High hired us, which applies to who? To Israel. Any service or ministration, the service of the Most High. You see, so it applies to the Israelites, right? Because that's what the, the very beginning says who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? Okay. Now let's go into that word adoption. Adoption as sons. You see that? So to the sons of the stranger, you know, that are adapt adopted into the covenants, right? Which another one down here is the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law. Which part of the law was what? Keeping the Sabbath day, right? So this was all given to Israel. So how the hell are you going to tell me that Isaiah 56 verse 3 and verse 6 is only talking, is not really talking about Israel. It's talking about anyone, right? Let's go back to listen to this dude. Down later, it says, also the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants. Everyone who keeps from profaning the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant, even those I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. So we have this beautiful imagery uh, by a merciful God that's reduced into basically racism by God. When it says, all the foreigners who join themselves to me, and all, don't let them say, I will separate me from his people, and I'm going to bring the foreigners in, all one of those will make joyful on my holy mountain. Uh, he says, they're saying that that only refers to Israelites. And it's difficult if you, if you maintain their definitions. If you use their definitions of these words, you're going to have a very hard time disproving Israel only at all because they take all those tools away from you. They say, no, you can't use uh, this word here, foreigner, because foreigner refers to lost Israelites. It doesn't refer to other nations. And so the problem, what you need to do is not 
stoop to their definitions. That's one of the first things you do in a debate is you define your terms. And if you let them define the terms, uh, you're lost before you started because they redefine all the terms that speak to anybody else. So we're going to prove that that's just simply not. All right. So there you go. He said that we redefine all the terms. Well, I went into it, right? That word covenants, diatheke, is a disposition arrangement of any sort which one wishes to be valid and last disposition which one makes of his earthly possessions after his death a testament or a will a compact a covenant a testament right and you have the new testament which is the blood of yahweh shai and yahweh shai spoke the same thing uh what was it matthew that wasn't matthew um was it matthew it might have been um, Mark 24, Mark 26. Let me see here. Might have been Matthew. Okay, yeah. Matthew 24, maybe 26. It says, set upon the olives. It says, Matthew 24 and 4. Okay. It says, and Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you, right? How do you take heed that no one deceives you, man? By going back into the scriptures, right? How can somebody deceive you if you know what the scriptures mean? If you know the breakdowns, if you know that the mark of the beast is the RFID chip, okay? If you know that uh, that the Israelites were going to wake up and the Israelites were going to do this, how can somebody deceive you when you know, Okay. If you have a blue, uh, a, a, a blue pill in your right hand, or, or a blue pill in your left hand, and a red pill in your in your right hand, and you're about to take that red pill, and somebody tells you, no, don't don't eat that pill. That's 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 the blue pill. And you look at it, and you're like, yo, what the? Are you tripping? You know, when you're sure that that's a red pill, you're gonna take it regardless, man. You know, and that's what we're doing with this truth. We know this is the truth. We know this is the way. We hear Yahabashim Yahushai calling us. This is the way. Walk ye in it. And that's what we're doing. You know? And you have these, these so-called Christians that don't have, you know, any type of understanding, any type of, of, of revelation, okay? Here you have Christianity for, for hundreds of years, and not once have they broken, you know, the, the seals, broken down the scriptures, Okay, they don't understand it. That's why, you know, but but they're quick to tell you, oh, whatever they're saying is not true. You know, they're quick to tell you that stuff, man, because they don't understand it. Right. So it says, let no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I am Mashiach and shall deceive many. And, ye sh and, and that word Mashiach doesn't necessarily only have to be the Messiah. All right. It can also be anointed. Right. That's why you have anti Messiah or Antichrist, which means anti uh, anti anointed people. You know, which are who the Israelites. Right. It says anointed Mashiach was and is the Messiah, the son of the most high anointed. You see, so it means anointed. So it says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars so that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Right. So when do you have these Christians breaking down the scriptures saying, oh, this is talking about, you know, wars and rumors of wars is happening right now. And, you know, uh, uh, this is talking about this and this is talking about that. You don't, you know, but they're real quick to, to jump on the Israelites and say, what you're saying is blasphemy. What you're saying is not true, you know, which is which is proof to us all right, that they're hurt. You know, they're hurting. They don't understand this. So they're hurting because they don't have it. You know, so from there, let me go to, to what was it? And let me go back to whatever he was saying. The case in Isaiah 56, three, the word for foreigner used there is Nikar. And if you want to see how, what a word means, you just look in other places. Is there any place in the Bible where Nakar is said to be used in description of somebody who is exclusively, definitely not an Israelite? If that's the case, then we know that the same foreigner, Nakar, here could be used to replace. 
All right, so he, he says, you know, you got to look up the word in a car. Let's lock it. Isaiah 56 and verse 3. Let the son of the stranger, right? Which obviously the word stranger there, like I made mention, is going into, uh, you know, uh, uh, somebody of another nation. And that's the first thing that I mentioned. You know, but what he doesn't mention, it says, Wa Allah or Wa Al Ya Amar. Okay, so you have Wa Allah, which means and two. Um, it says, Ya Amar. Amar means, um, damn, I can't remember. Speak. All right, and to speak. Or he spoke and he spoke. It says ban, which means son. All right. Ha nakar, the son of the stranger. Right? And speak to the son of the strangers, right? It says, Neither let the son of the stranger that has joined himself to the Yahweh speak, saying, Yahweh hath utterly separated, which in Hebrew that it, it does say that which in Hebrew, you know, sometimes you have I believe it was Zechariah chapter three, where it says Bakayar uh, Yahawa Bakhashatan, which means rebuke Yahawa in Satan, right? That's what the literal translation would be when in, in Zechariah 3 it tells you uh, Yahawa rebuke Satan, you know? But the way that Hebrew is, is much more powerful and it's worded differently, right? So we say Bakayar uh, Yahawa Bakhashatan. But you have to say babakusha, 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 which means please three times. You know? So let the son of the stranger, ban, and then the stranger is nakayar, which is going to show as an actual foreigner. You know? So it says, Genesis 17 and 12, And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, and every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed, you see, so a, a different nation. It says, All men of this house born in the house and bought with money of the stranger were circumcised with them. Right? So people that are bar, uh, born outside of, of, of a lineage. Uh, then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. Right? Because... Um, that strange God is talking about foreign outside of, of what uh, the Most High is, you know. So when we have foreigners come into the fold, it's Israelites, as we read in Romans chapter 9 and in Deuteronomy 33, that are going to praise Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, okay, in this time. Because eventually you will have Israelites that are going to praise Yahweh, I mean, uh, uh, foreigners, other nations that are going to praise Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. But right now we have foreigner Israelites that are coming to the fold to praise Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, point in case, why would Jeremiah 31 and 31 talk about only Israelites going into that covenant? Right. Which actually I have it here. And then from there, let me get the other one that I was wanting to get. It's a block. Go to it. Jeremiah. Oops. Too far. Jeremiah 31. Okay. Let's see, it's a Right, Jeremiah 31 and 31, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. All right. When does it say with, with you know, the, 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 with the other nations? All right. When you go into the house of Israel, it's Yashar Allah. All right. So down here, Yashar Allah, which is God prevails. All right. Which Yashar Allah is, he is a prince of the power. 
That's the true name given. Um, the name of the descendants of the nation of the uh, descendants and the nation of the descendants of Jacob. You see, it doesn't say anything about Esau, Edom being able to make it. It doesn't say anything about Ammonites, Moabites. It doesn't say anything about anybody else. You know, he's he's legit trying to focus on one word. All right. And try to bring out something that's not even there, man. You know, but that that's what Christians do. You know, that's what the devil did. All right. To Yahweh Shai, whenever he tried to tempt him. You know, he, he used the scriptures to try and, and, and provoke him, to try and confuse him. All right. But Yahweh Shai was in the spirit of Yahweh. All right. Which that's why he brought out the scriptures that he brought out. He said, don't don't tempt the Lord thy God. You know, and these Christians don't understand, man. They're, they're really trying to be deep when they're not, you know, not saying that I'm deep. OK, I'm not saying I'm some some type of, you know, uh, anything, man. You know, I know what I am. I'm just a, a regular ass man. All right. But I'm trying to follow in the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. OK, so it says the name of the nation after the return from exile, the name used given to the northern kingdom consisting of the 10 tribes under Jeroboam the southern kingdom was known as Judah which was Judah Benjamin and Levi all right it doesn't say anything about any other people coming into the fold as Israelites you know it doesn't say that anywhere man point blank period right so it says and with the house of Judah you see so that's talking about the Israelites Judah, Benjamin, Levi, which is the southern kingdom, and then the ten tribes, which Dan was, um, the spirit of Dan is, is within Israel still, but he's calling himself by the name of another tribe. So it says, uh, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, okay? This is the Most High speaking, right? This is the Most High Yahweh speaking. This is, this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh, and I will put my laws in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. When has this happened? Right? When did it happen so, so that we can know who, who Israel is, so that we can know who the true followers of the Lord are? It hasn't happened yet. Right? So when we go in here, it says, but this shall be my covenant. And it's Baryath. All right. Baryath, which means covenant alliance pledge. Right? When you have when you have an agreement, you know, which is a covenant. You know, we went into that word covenant as well in, in the book of Romans, you know. So where, where does it say or where does it state, you know, that, that all these nations are able to make it under under the kingdom of, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai? Right. It doesn't. OK, that foreigner is talking about foreigners, but the son of the foreigner, which is uh you know, um, it, it could potentially be an Israelite man that, that's calling himself a Greek, calling himself by the name of another nation, just like Timothy's father called himself a Greek. OK, but he was an Israelite, even though his mother was an Israelite as well. But his father called himself a foreigner, you know, and we know that people that were outside of, of the temple, people that were outside of, of what Israel stands for, were considered heathen. You know? So this is a, uh, let me see, what was it? Um, it was Matthew, it was Matthew 26, Salakia. Matthew 26 and verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins, right? We just read Jeremiah 31 and 31. So when we go into that word testament, the New Testament, it's diatheke, which means what? A compact, a covenant, a testament, right? So we read 
Jeremiah 31, 31, which diatheke means what? A covenant. Okay? We read in Romans chapter 9, which diatheke means what? A covenant. We read in Jeremiah 31, 31, which a covenant is an agreement. Okay? So the agreement that the Most High is making is only with the nation of Israel. So the only way to make sense out of Isaiah, even Romans 9, continuing on, it talks about the Gentiles, all right, which are Israelites, according to the beginning of Romans 9, you know. So when you go to Isaiah 56, in verse 6, and also the sons of the stranger that join themselves unto Yahweh to serve him, and to love the name of Yahweh, to be his servants. And we read in Romans 9 that the only ones that can serve Yahweh Shai are the Israelites. It says, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. And we read in Romans 9 how the only ones that are going to be able to keep the laws are the Israelites, because that's who it was given to. And keepeth hold of my covenant. And we read the covenants are given to Israel. So, so you know, this, this dude is trying to break it down in, in a different way, man apply to other nations. And in fact, that is the case. On well, Genesis 17, 12, God tells Abraham, for the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, including those of your, in your household or bought with money from a foreigner, those who are not your offspring. That were right there, foreign. Right, and Abraham, what happened after Abraham? Was, was the, the covenant, did it, did it stop with Abraham? Okay, was it given to Abraham and that was it? It didn't continue on through a lineage? No, it went from Abraham, right? And then it went to Isaac, right? And then it went to Jacob. And out of Jacob came the fountain of Jacob, which is the offspring of Jacob. Okay, so you had Israelites before they were Israelites, like Abraham, Isaac. And then you had a great multitude of people that followed after Yahweh the Most High. Okay, so where do you think those people are now? Okay, where do you think those people that follow the Most High are now? They're going to come back as Israelites. That's why the Most High has set it up that way. You know, because we believe in reincarnation. That's why the scriptures make sense to us. Because we believe in certain things that these Christians don't and they cannot accept. And that's why they're in the position that they're in. Okay, losing all kinds of power. You know, because we're waking up to this truth and we're, we're gaining this power, this knowledge, this wisdom, understanding, you know. So, so is the Most High dealing with other nations? No, not in the sense that he's dealing with Israel, because we know that the Most High has control over the whole world. Eventually, though, OK, eventually all these nations will bow down to Yahweh and to Yahweh Shai. Right. So this is Isaiah 2 and 1. The word of Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. You see, eventually all nations will serve Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. You know, but who is that mountain? Who is that house that's going to be established? Well, it's David's uh, tabernacle, the tabernacle of David. It's the third temple. All right. And in the sec second book of Ezra, I believe it was chapter two. It might have been 13. I believe it, it is 13 where Yahweh Shai flies unto that mountain. All right. That's talking about the government. Okay. The government of Israel. You know, the elect starting with Yahweh Shai. And then the 144,000. And all nations will flow unto it. That's why in Jeremiah 31, continuing on, it tells you that no Israelite is going to teach another Israelite. Okay? But we are going to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the perfection because we're going to be teaching these nations. That's why it says all nations shall flow unto it. Verse 3, And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the Most High of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Why? Because out of uh, uh, the mouth of, of his people are going to come the words. 
right? It says, and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Why? Because the house of, oh, there it is. Verse five, the house of Jacob come ye and let us walk in the light of Yahweh. You see, so it's all going to belong to Jacob, man. It's point blank period. It's right there. It's easy. You know, scripture broke, broke itself down, man. You know, so ver, uh, Isaiah two and verse six, therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east and are soothsayers like the Philistines and they please themselves in the children of strangers. You know, so that's bad. Isaiah 2 and 6 proves that it's bad to have children of strangers, which means you had uh, in the book of Ezra, I believe I made mention of it earlier, uh, the book of Ezra, you had Israelites that were adopting sons of another nation, which is a no-no, okay? Sons of a different nation outside of what Israel is, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, the ten tribes, Outside of what that is, you're not supposed to adopt sons into coming up into a stead of, of an Israelite. Because an Israelite is in high power. If you if you bring in a woman and she has a son, okay, that's why Ezra's rented his garments and his clothes, okay, because we were bringing in children of, of those other nations, man. Sons and daughters, we were bringing them in, treating them like our own. You know, that's a no-no. So so is the scripture contradicting? You know? So can we have uh, uh, sons of strangers or can we have children of strangers? Yes or no? Which one is it? There comes a point to where scripture doesn't make sense to these Christians. So they just start guessing, man. Guesstimating. Oh, I think that means um, in that particular time period... It's always going to go back to that, man. So why doesn't it say in the scripture in this particular time period, we couldn't have children of strangers? You know? Because Israel went off. Israel went way the fuck off, man. And now we're trying to come back to our power. And that's why these other nations are afraid. Because every time we came back to power by way of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh he established us as a nation. All right. And he put us in a rulership state. And that means all these other nations had to come under us. And that's what they don't want. They don't want Israel to rule again. So they're going to say everything they can to come up against what we speak. But again, scripture breaks itself down, man. You know, scripture breaks itself down and all praises be unto Yahweh. So I hope that was edifying. Until next time, I want to say Shalom and and. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to you brothers out there pushing this word out in sincerity and in truth. Shalom.